If you like hard-hitting barbarian action, how about three for the price of one? Conan meets some of his betters in Conan the Barbarian number nine from Titan Comics. We're going to talk about it right here. See you in three. And welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Conan the Barbarian number nine from Titan Comics. And in this issue, Conan is sent back in time to meet his favor, his famous barbarian brethren with a snake man problem. But before we get started, please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that bell for notification. Your attention is greatly appreciated and stay tuned to the end for the final score. Conan the Barbarian number nine is written by Jim Zub, art by Robert De La Torre, colors by Dean White, letters by Richard Starkings, and the main cover, cover A, is drawn by Mike Diodato. Before we cover what happens in this issue, let's recap what happened in the previous issue. So in Conan the Barbarian number eight, Conan was possessed by the specters that were released from the dark magic inside the Black Stone. And the specters possessed him, trying to take him over and trying to convert him into a slave for their master, who at the very last moment we, we now know is Thulsa Doom. And so Conan fights with everything he has to prevent himself from being turned into a weapon for Thulsa's um, machinations or plans or whatever you have it's in store for him and to prevent that from happening at the very last moment conan impales himself on his own sword and he dies or so we thought but that's not exactly what happened he is somehow transported and sent into a, an alternate plane of reality where he's uh, basically told to accept his fate and his destiny and reclaim his strength and then he passes out and then we wake up in this issue so what happens in Conan the Barbarian number nine? Conan wakes up, and, but he wakes up at the exact moment that Brule, the famous barbarian, destroys the pedestal and the, the main statue of the Black Stone 80,000 years in the past. And instead of continuing the legend as we saw from the, early, or from the first arc, what happens is Conan now emerges from the shattered remains of the, of the statue. And there's a brief fight, but Conan is completely spent and he passes out. So now Conan has been sent back in time 80,000 years, now in the company of Brule, who ties him up and gets ready to interrogate him later once Conan wakes up. Uh, Conan tells him the truth as much as he understands it. Uh, he recognizes the name of Brule, but he's not quite sure why. Uh, but Brule says, I'm going to take you with me until we can figure out what's going on. That night, Conan manages to escape, and when the camp is attacked by a mountain lion, and they're all impressed with his... Uh, ability to escape his bonds and to also kill the mountain lion. And they said, look, we don't know what's going on, but you're clearly a formidable foe. Why don't you come with us? We're going to ride together to Volusia to figure out what's going on. So they ride into, uh, ride into Volusia. Conan is blown away by how beautiful the city is and how majestic and how huge the city is. And what happens is Conan says, uh, oh, uh, I want to check this out while you go meet with your king, whoever that happens to be. Conan is led away by a bevy of beautiful ladies, but they are, but they meet well, the wise man that uh, Conan met in the first arc. And the wise man is this sort of large elephant headed guy, literally the head of an elephant that he killed in the first arc, but he killed because the, the man asked him to rather than being captured and tortured for years on end. But this elephant man now can see into the future and the past, so he knows what's coming. And he says, thank you in advance. I'm glad to meet you. I know you remember me, but I remember you, even though technically speaking, we haven't met yet. But thank you for all your help. And then later, Conan hooks up with Brule, who is now in the, in the company of the king. And the king turns out to be, you guessed it, King Cole. So now you're getting all the barbarians. You're getting Conan, you're getting Brule, you're getting King Cole, you're getting it all in one shot. Brule now hears from the advisors around the king that uh, King Cole has been like sullen and in a deep depressive state and something's up with him. He, he stands before the king. He says, you know, I've got this gentleman that I've met. Gentleman. <laughs> we've got this barbarian that we've met named Conan. We're not quite sure where he comes from. It has something to do with the Black Rock. All of a sudden, King Cole just starts attacking everybody. He attacks uh, Brule, knocks him out. Then he attacks Conan. And then there's a big battle that lasts multiple pages. And it is amazing. But eventually, Brule comes to his senses and 
um, knocks out the king before he can kill Conan, and then everyone rushes in. But through the course of the fight and the conversation, the king is disturbed by the by the uh, possibility or his insider knowledge that there are shapeshifters somewhere in the kingdom ready to betray him, ready to take the throne. And the shape, one of the main shapeshifters or one of the gentlemen that is causing the most destruction is a shapeshifter that is a snake man. Also, Doom fans, you'll know who exactly who we're talking about. So that's where the issue ends. So there's a mystery. It's in Volusia. It's 80,000 years in the past. And there's more barbarians than you can shake a stick at. And it's amazing. Uh, what, do we, what do we like about Conan the Barbarian number nine? Let's talk about the pros and cons. What do we like about Conan the Barbarian? If you are a Robert E. Howard fan, this series is a dream. Jim Zub is killing it. You've got uh, gritty action, uh, interesting plot developments, a true mystery, ca familiar characters, but in a fresh new story. But the story feels authentic to Robert E. Howard's writing. So if basically you want to say, I want, I want more Robert E. Howard because I'm a diehard pulp fan, you feel like you're getting more of that. So Jim, is, Jim Zub is showing a true love for this, this style of storytelling and for these characters, and it comes through in the work loud and clear. What didn't we like about Conan the Barbarian number nine? It, it actually, honestly, nothing, nothing that was beyond a minor nitpick or two, uh, just little things where uh, you're not quite sure exactly uh, how Conan managed to rip up a tree while he's being attacked by a mountain lion. I mean, he, we're used to him being super strong, but that seemed a little bit much. But that's a minor nitpick, and it looks awesome, so you can kind of excuse it and let it go. How about the art? So Robert De La Torre, we've seen his work in the past. We've seen his work on this series, as well as, uh, I believe he also did some of the work on the on Dynamite's Tarzan series. And it's fantastic. Robert De La Torre absolutely nails that sort of gritty, very um, pulpy, dark shadow, dramatic, uh, Bronze Age style of visual storytelling. The character Cole, Brule, and Conan all look like powerful, formidable barbarians that you absolutely do not want to mess with. And the action choreography is fantastic. It sits perfectly right within that Bronze Age uh, form of classic Conan comic storytelling. And that's exactly what you want out of a series of this sort. I mean, there for if, if you're if you at all had any love for the original type of like the black, black and white zine Conan's uh, that came from Marvel Comics, this fits in there perfectly, perfectly. Final thoughts. What do we think about Conan the Barbarian number nine from Titan Comics? Intriguing mysteries, great pacing, great action, uh, lots of new cameos and uh, callbacks to classic Robert E. Howard, Howard stories, but within a fresh tale and, and fresh context. And, it, and the art is just simply fantastic. Therefore, we're going to give Conan the Barbarian number nine from Titan Comics a well-deserved 9.5 out of 10. Are you a Conan fan? Let us know in the comments section. I want to hear your opinions about Conan and more importantly, how do you think Jim Zub is doing on this series? We think he's doing great. I want to know if you agree or not. If you don't agree, let us know. So thank you very much for joining. If you like more comic reviews just like this one, please stay tuned through the outro.